about my own agenda. And I believe that I have something to say to you tonight that comes from the throne room of God. Psalms 37. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good so shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Here's the key. Rest in the Lord. Rest in the Lord. And wait patiently for Him. Fret not thyself because of Him who prospereth in His way because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evil doers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord they shall inherit the earth. Father God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your spirit that is in this place, Lord God. Holy Spirit, give us ears to hear and eyes to see tonight exactly where the spirit of the Lord wants to say to us, Lord. Father, let me hear you clearly tonight. Empty out anything that is of flesh, Father God, and speak through me tonight to touch the hearts of your people tonight, God. I thank you for who you have sent here in this place, for this message is for them, Father God. I thank you, Father, that you have all things in control and that we don't have to worry we don't have to work. We don't have to be anxious, Father. For, Lord, there is an open door that you have opened that no man can shut. So let your word go forth tonight like seed, and let it not return unto you void. But, God, let it accomplish that for which you have sent it. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to tell you that the Spirit of God is in this place. It is so powerful, and it is so strong. And I will tell you that as I go out and I've been traveling, I keep hearing confirmation after confirmation about what the Lord is doing and I'm preaching about spiritual warfare, preaching that there is a war that is going on, preaching about 
getting our lives, getting our houses in order, begin to really take audit of who we listen to, of the influences, of the different things that we uh, have become so immune to. There is a spirit of the age that is, that is coming in and it's a spirit of compromise, it's a spirit of complacency. Um, it is a spirit of whatever makes me feel good, and what's ever good in the moment. And everybody is seeking for this thing that I just want peace, I just, I just want this thing fixed. And because you're at a place that you are so frustrated, you're willing and your, your, your spirit is open to just hear and, and take in what makes you feel good in the moment. We are in Matthew 24. We are in those days. And it says that even the elect will fall. It says in the last days that there'll be messages that will just tickle people's ears. And it will make you feel good. And there is a way that seems good, but at the end of it is destruction. And there's death. And while I'm talking about spiritual warfare, I don't ever want to be unbalanced or ever give anybody the idea that we've got to be running in fear of devils and demons and the demonic and the spiritual war the war world that's out there. But we have to be wise and know that it is there and that it does exist and that when we commit ourselves to the Lord and we walk in his ways, if we keep his commandments, if we keep his statutes, if we live the way he has told us to live, we don't have to worry about any of that stuff. But it's when we walk in our own way, when we walk in our own agenda, and we want to, you know, it's, it's almost like God showed me a puzzle. And sometimes you look at two pieces of the puzzle and they look like they fit. And you so want them to fit because you can't find the other piece to fit that you'll do what you can to force it together. Ever do a puzzle and you kind of force stuff to come together and there's always like, it doesn't really fit. It keeps popping up. It doesn't. And, and I think that that's what we do in our lives. And this morning, I have to tell you, I already prepared a message because it talked about spiritual warfare. It's, it's here. It's in my notes. And I was really kind of struggling with it. And after I got it all done and we were all on our way over here, the Lord just began to speak to my spirit. And he said, I want you to tell people, tell my people to let it go. To let it go. Let the fear let the anxiety and let the worry go. Because what we don't understand is that God, we know that verse, that God has not given us a spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. Fear does not come from God. He says it over and over in his word that we are not to have anxiety, that we are not to worry over things. And he's not given us that spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. Fear is one of the most demonic things that is sent out to oppress somebody. And the way that we allow fear to come into our lives is when we read this 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 psalm and and you break down the verses and again this is this is so hot off the press that I'm getting this from God right now. <laughs> he says first he says in verse 3 he says trust. First he tells us to fear not, fret not. Then he tells us to trust in the Lord. Then he tells us to delight 
ourselves in the Lord. Then he tells us to commit our way to the Lord. It's all, it's all laid out there step by step by step. Trust, delight, commit. Because when we trust him and we delight in him and we commit to him, that means that God has got everything in his hand. That we don't have to fear against anything. So what does this have to do with spiritual warfare? Because God does not call any emotion a spirit other than fear. Spirit of fear, it's a spirit. It's something that comes against you and oppresses you, paralyzes you. When you trust, if I trust God, I'm trusting him to take care of it. My children, they never ever ask me, will we have electricity tomorrow? They'll never ask me, are we gonna eat tomorrow? They'll ask me, what's for dinner? But they'll never ask me, will I eat? Will the lights be on? Will I have somewhere to live? They never have to worry about that stuff because they trust. And if we trusted in God that way, that when Jesus said, you don't have to worry about you know, the birds, they don't, they don't worry. Na nature doesn't worry. Animals don't worry. They trust. And yet, God tells us, Jesus tells us, that we're not to worry about all this stuff. Because if he's already made a way for them, and how much more because he loves each and every one of us, how much more will he do for us? So if I'm trusting him, it takes pressure off. See, many people that are here, and, and, I'm, and I really believe that you're here for a specific reason and you need to hear this message. You are shouldering burdens and carrying burdens that you were not meant to carry. And this is part of the problem of why you are trapped and why you are stuck. Because you're not trusting in him. You're taking responsibility for things that you are not responsible for. Maybe your parents put responsibility on you. Maybe because of your situation in life, you might have had responsibility thrust on you. But he, God, is the source of all your resources. He is the one who is responsible that if you are sick, God will heal you. See, some people have a spirit of infirmity coming at them. And what's happening, and, and this is where, with all the teaching that I do, because in a lot of my teaching, it's all about, you need to do your homework. You need to ask yourself the questions. You need to be looking at stuff. And we've got to look at stuff, and we've got to understand different issues. You don't, but there's a balance because there are some people that go into such denial that they never look at anything, okay? But there's a balance between doing the work and then once you're doing the work, there's also got to be that place that when God brings something up that you still realize that it's not your responsibility for you to heal yourself. To say, if I don't learn this, if I don't get this, then I'm not going to get healed,
What God is saying to me is, you're working too hard. You're working too hard. You're thinking that I'm going to give you the answer and then you make the answer happen. Does that make sense? It's like a surgeon who says to you, it's like when the surgeon came to me and said, you've got precancerous cells and here are your options. I knew I needed a double mastectomy, but I couldn't do the surgery myself. I had to have somebody do the surgery. I just needed to be aware of what the problem was. But the surgeon had to do the work. God brings, and the Holy Spirit brings revelation into your life to show you where the problem is. And then once he shows you where the problem is, then he says, okay, now you know what the problem is. Now give me that problem. Your only responsibility is to give your issue to God. Not to shoulder it and not to figure it out. But to trust him and work with him that when he shows you something, God, okay, here it is. Now I trust you with that thing. The next thing he says is delight yourself in the Lord. Trust in the Lord and do good. It means trust in the Lord and do, and, and do his will. And thou shalt dwell in the land and thou shalt be fed. So if you trust God, God is going to provide. He's going to take care of you. But then he says, delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Now my children, they trust me. That tomorrow when they wake up, they've got a house. They've got a roof over the head. There's heat. There's clothing. There's not just breakfast, but there's lunch and there's dinner. And then there's all kinds of snacks. And they can delight in the fact, they can delight in their parents knowing, I've got good parents. Because I trusted them and now I can just sit back and I can delight in that. I can trust in that. I can, I, can, I can enjoy that fact and know that because I trust him, the burden is off of me. See, a lot of times depression comes on us and comes at us because if you're shouldering stuff that you can't handle, I mean, how happy are you? I mean, you might be able to carry a five-pound bag of potatoes, maybe even a 10-pound. You might, somebody here might even be able to handle 100 pounds. But if I kept adding pound after pound after pound, everybody's got a limit. And what's happening is when you're taking responsibility, you just put more and more and more on yourself. And if you're walking around with that kind of weight and, and burden on you, how can you delight yourself in anything? How can you find joy? How can you find peace when you are so burdened? Jesus never said that things weren't going to come against you. You know, faith, faith does not block you from stuff happening. Faith carries you through the things that happen. Faith is a weapon. Because I can either believe the report of the enemy or I can believe the report of the Lord. I've got faith in the word of the Lord. So if I trust in the Lord and then if I can delight in God and say, you know what, God? I trust you. I, 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 I trust you that this thing is happening. And God, I just delight in that. And I begin to just thank him. God, I don't know when it's coming. And I don't know how it's coming. But I can delight and I can find joy in the Lord because I can delight myself in him. 
And you see, once I trust in him and then I delight in him, then it says, then I'll give you the desires of your heart. So maybe we're not seeing healing and we're not seeing manifestation and we've got all this stuff because we're shouldering stuff and trying to figure out stuff and trying to fix everything and trying to pinpoint everything and everything has got to have a reason and everything has got to have an answer and everything has got to have a question and everything has got to be wrapped up in a bow so that I understand every jot and tittle of everything. Because inquiring minds want to know and sometimes... Sometimes God just wants to bring stuff to light and he wants to fix it for you. But you've got your hands on it. Another thing the Spirit of God spoke to me is he, he wanted me to tell you, can you just enjoy him? To just enjoy the Lord, enjoy the presence of God. How many people love the worship tonight? Yeah. See, tonight the worship, it was an object lesson. I love when God, see, I'm a hands-on learner. I don't really listen. I can't really listen and learn. Um, I need to be shown it, and if I can do it myself, if I can, if I can see it, and I can, I, I can learn like that. And, and here's the thing. You know, with tonight, I enjoyed being in his presence. Because when I was in his presence tonight, I mean, I have been so sick this whole week. I mean, I was amazed that I even preached on Tuesday. I got home on Tuesday night. I crawled out of here. I've been in bed. I got myself up yesterday to go preach. I woke up this morning and I went, okay, here we got to go do it again. But when I came to church and I'm with the saints, there was, there's a, I, I, I enjoyed being in the presence of God because when I can delight myself in him and here's the thing we've got to do our work and we've got to be diligent and we've got to study the word and we've got to keep ourselves right and 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 be wise as serpent harmless as dove be that watchman on the wall but yet enjoy the Lord you know Everybody talks about, you know, relationships take a lot of work, okay? Marriage takes a lot of work. Friendships take a lot of work. And I was, I was sharing this with, with Janine, and I said, you know, Janine and Bobby, they're kind of like the male and female versions of each other. They, they, they're both... Um, have the same type of integrity. They have the, the same loyalty. They, they're just very much the same type of people. And what I thank God for the both of them in my life is that, and the reason why I can be so close to them um, on a friendship level and on a marital level is that even though our friendship and our, and our marriage, there's work, but it's, it's not a drudge. Okay, I can tell you that Janine and I have never sat down and ever had a conversation about our friendship. We've never had to draw up guidelines. We've never had to draw boundaries and discuss where our relationship is at. When we get together, it just flows. There's no, there's no thinking, there's no talking. It's the same thing with my husband. Now listen, to keep relationships alive, to keep marriages alive, yes, it, it's work to try to find date night when somebody's working 70 hours a week. When you've got schedules going in different places, you've got three kids, you've got a mom, you've got all of this stuff. It's hard. That stuff is work. But being with him, it's never a drudge. It's not work. You, you, and you know what I'm talking about. There are those people that when you see them, okay, the holidays are a coming, people. The holidays are a coming, and there are, and I will be very honest. There are certain people that I literally, I have to go into a time of fasting and praying. I know that that sounds terrible, and I'm sorry. I'm so transparent. And you could pray for me that I get saved. Um, you know, if, if that's what it takes, but there, there are some people that they, they, they just, 
They suck the life out of me. Thank you, Patty. <laughs> and, and those kind of relationships, like, that's, that's work. But we shouldn't work like that with the Lord. And sometimes, I, and, and you know, when God said to me, Can you tell my people to enjoy me. Enjoy the Lord. That's what he means by delight yourself in the Lord. That studying the word of God is not a chore. Now, listen, I understand that some people, and, and I'm one of them, have had reading disabilities, and, and sometimes, you know, reading, it, it's, it's difficult to do. So listen, get the CDs of the teaching. Find a way that you learn, but spend time with God, and it shouldn't be. Well, God doesn't want me to do this, and I can't do that, and I get in all of these different things. And or when we're talking about spiritual warfare, to put you in such a, a state that everything is a demon, or I can't watch this, and I can't. God is not about the don'ts as much as He is about doing the do's. And there's so much in God's word to do that if you spend all the time doing the do's, you don't have time to do the don'ts. Why? Because the do's it brings you into His presence. And when you're at a place to be able to approach God, he says, listen, because the veil was made rent, he says, you're allowed to boldly come. You know, in the Old Testament, there was a time that you had one day, one day a year, and you couldn't even go behind that curtain. The high priest had to go. But now, because Jesus died on the cross and that veil was made rent, he said, you can come into daddy anytime you want. You, you, you don't have to worry about those things. And, and talking to God and, and prayer, okay? Listen, we pray, when, when, when we're praying to God, you know, the Bible says it's not that we don't pray, that we pray amiss. But that doesn't mean that when you get into your prayer closet, you turn into somebody else, Don't talk King James to God if that's not how you talk. I read King James because when I got ordained, this was the book, and there's just certain things about the King James when you're studying it that it gives you, you know, just different kinds of words that, that I pull stuff out of. But when I'm talking to God, I'm not talking in these and thines and don'ts and thuses and and. You know, when I talk to God, I talk to him personally because I don't send my representative in. And when you delight yourself, you know, when my children have a problem, they're not afraid. They're not afraid to come to me. There are some conversations they might not want to have. But really, I mean, for the most part, even if it's a difficult conversation, my children don't have a problem coming to me. Sometimes they don't want to come. They don't want to admit. But you know, Sammy's famous, her famous line around the house, Mom, I have a question. I have a question. And you know what? It doesn't matter when that question comes up. If it's before school, after school, even during, even during school, I'll get text. I have a question. Because as a child, she can delight in the fact that I'm, because I trust my mom and dad, I know that they're always there. And there's a joy that comes with that. And she enjoys that relationship. And it should be no different than with God our Father. And listen, when you come to God and you come to him as you are, it's okay if you don't speak proper English. Jesus speaks every language. He wired you. He understands Okay, even if you say something that doesn't sound right and somebody would might get a like God knows you. He knows what you mean. God knows what you mean. And thank God for that. I wouldn't be standing here if I didn't have that kind of relationship with God. And God wants you to enjoy him. Your relationship with the Lord and growing as a Christian should not be a chore. It should be a joy. It should be a joy. 
that you don't have to, oh God, I got to figure this out. And God, you know, we're working together and you're showing me this. And if I do this and I do that, stop putting works into everything and just be. Allow God to show you the things that he needs to show you. But then trust in him that, okay, God, you're showing me this. And you know that I can't save myself. I can't heal myself. I can't fix myself. I can't change my own mind. So God, I need you to help me. And then allow him to touch you. Because sometimes, you know, I love that saying, um, from analysis to paralysis. That sometimes we can just always think something and analyze something and think about it and think about it and work and work and work. Your brain is never shutting off. <coughs> it's never shutting off. Why? Because the third thing that he says, he said, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust, and he, and he reminds us, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. So if I commit my way to the Lord, and I'm trusting in him, and I'm delighting in him, again, trust me with it, and don't be afraid. And don't look at whatever else somebody is getting or what they're not getting or they're not doing. Because it, it will drive you nuts that when you are really trying to straighten out and you're really trying to follow God, that you're going to see somebody that you know is not living right, causing all that trouble and doing this, and yet they seem to be being blessed. Listen, don't look at that. Because I will tell you that that's another part of spiritual warfare. Because the enemy is always going to be parading. Because, and here's the thing, God, see, God will allow those people, see, this is how, how God works and how, and how uh, there could be the same thing and how God works it and how the devil works it. Because you could be praying for something and somebody who you know is not living right or is not, you know, doing the right thing has got what you want. God will allow that to be paraded in front of you because he wants you to see Will you, will you celebrate and not hate? Can you rejoice? Because if you can't celebrate somebody else's happiness, he's going to bench you. Because jealousy has no place in a Christian's life. But now Satan will do that. And while God's saying, can you celebrate? Satan is saying, how can you celebrate? Where is God? Look at you. You've been so faithful. You've been serving and you've been, you've been giving and you've been living right and doing right. And look, and they're getting this and they're getting that and all of this other stuff. But you see, when you can learn how to trust, how to delight, and how to commit, what God is doing spiritually there is he's teaching you how to put spiritual blinders on your eyes that all you can do is be focused on him. Because when we start looking at that stuff, it will trip us up. God wants our focus. If I had to sum up one word of what God is doing in this, in this day and in this hour, he's saying focus. Focus on me. Focus on what I'm doing in your life what applies to you? Stop. And listen, this is something that God had to do in, in my own life. I had to stop worrying about different, different stuff because you know what? It was nothing but distractions. Foolishness, drama, and all that is nothing but distractions from the enemy. So he says, if you trust, you commit. Trust, delight, and commit. He says, I will bring this thing to pass. And then the last thing that he tells you to do, he says, rest. Just rest. You know, I could tell that the, the presence of the Lord was here. And when we were loud and we were going and going, everybody was into it. And all of a sudden, when things start to settle down, you know, we've been standing for about an hour, and things get really quiet. Everybody kind of gets that. It's kind of, what do we do now? 
It's really quiet. Because silence sometimes is, is uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. I was out in a restaurant one day, and uh, I was just watching. Everybody was sitting around, you know. Everybody was talking and stuff like that. And I saw this married couple. I assumed that they were married, you know, a man and a woman. They, they were older. Um, and they were eating, and they were just sitting, and they weren't talking. And I thought, isn't that strange? Why are you, why, why do people do that? Why, why are they talking? And I realized something. I do that in my own marriage. And it frustrates me. Because Bobby works a lot. And when we get alone, the man is not a man of many words. And sometimes we'll be sitting there, and we're finally alone. The kids are not there, and there's nothing going on. And there's a quietness there. And sometimes I get a little like, talk to me. You know, I, I <laughs> talk to me. I, I want I want to hear what's going on in that mind. And 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 yet, you know what the you know what God said to me about it? He said, "What's wrong with just resting and enjoying?" He said, "Because that's what you do in my presence. That sometimes when we come into God, because we're so you know we're so desperate and we so want to hear and we want this and we want that and we want God to move and we want that that sky to open up and that dove to come down and the burning bush and we want all of that. And I understand it because listen, you know, like sometimes you know your prayer life gets to be like, speak, Lord, now. I need an answer now. I'm frustrated. I'm sick. I got this going on. I got that going on. I need an answer now. And God just sometimes just wants to bask in your presence. And he wants you to bask in his presence. Because here's the thing. Whenever God is present, whether he speaks or not, he moves. He moves. That's why, you know, like growing up in church, you know, things can become a pattern and a tradition. And I would see how, you know, we start off with a couple fast songs, then we go into some worship, and then we get into that deep worship. And then whenever it was silent, there were some people, sometimes it was God, and sometimes it was just that there were people that, okay, it's quiet, now's my time, I could prophesy. And you always knew when it was them and it wasn't God, okay? But because of that awkward silence and not being able to understand that sometimes I just need to rest in the Lord. I just need to rest. I need to be able to trust him that what I've committed to him, that I can delight in the fact that he's doing it, and then I can just Rest and know that he has all things in his hands. Because he says, everything that I've promised you, he says it in here. He says, I will bring it to pass. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently. And fret not thyself because of him who prospereth. Stop looking. Stop looking to the right and to the left and just focus on him. That when he has revealed some of those issues, sometimes we say, I don't know what to do with this. God show me this. I don't know what to do with this. Trust him that what he told you was right. Commit it to him. Commit it to him. You know, Alicia, when I, when I, when I spoke to you tonight, it was, so, it was so clear. You were standing in front of an open door. And you kept looking at it and saying, but it's shut. It's shut. And it wasn't shut. There was just something blocking it. But you've got to know that what he said to you 
He said it. He's bringing it to pass. It's not your responsibility to bring it to pass. You just keep doing what you're doing. You keep praying. You keep fasting. Every day that you're going through something, if it's your health, if it's your finances, if it's your marriage, if it's a relationship, if it's work-related, whatever, whatever you've got going on every day, God, I've got this sickness going on. I'm just giving it to you. I'm trusting you that this thing is going. I'm committing it to you. The Bible says that God is able to keep that which we commit to him. So that means that which we commit. If we commit it, he keeps it. But sometimes I don't think that we're committing all that we need to be committing to God. Because we tell him about it, but we don't give it to him. You know, it's, it's one thing when somebody says, you know what? I got a gift for you. I'm going to give you this. I'm going to give you that. And they never give it to you. Anybody ever have that happen? And after a while, it's just like, okay, stop talking about it, you know? But don't, you know, don't, don't talk about it. But God says, if you, if you commit it to me, once you give it to me, I'll keep it. I'll fix it. I'll heal it. You know, we hold God to his word. But what about holding us to our word? That God, I gave you that. I gave you my kids. I gave you my money. I gave you my sickness. I gave you my body. I give you my mind. God, I'm giving it to you every desire. Because here's the thing, when we're trusting and we're committing things, if we're committing things to him that are not of his will and, and, and not in his, in his word for us, that's when he starts to speak to us. And that's when we can just delight ourselves in the Lord and just say, you know what, God, whatever you're going to do with this, you're going to do with it. I delight myself in you. I'm going to be in you. I could trust you. And God says, I'll give you the desires of your heart. See, God is for you. He is not against you. God, God wants you. He wants you to be blessed. God is on your side. God has set everything in order for you. And God is just waiting for you to rest in him. Rest in his presence. And just trust him and say, Lord, I know that you've got this thing. God is looking for lives today that are completely, totally sold out to him. God, whatever, however you want to bring a blessing, if it's through people, not through people, whatever. But my trust isn't in people. My trust isn't in my friendship. My trust isn't in my husband. My trust is in you because you were the source of every resource. And God wants you tonight. This was, this was an illustrated sermon of what God wants to do. Get into your prayer closet. And, and, and this, is, this is your assignment, and this is something that is very, very important, and I want everybody to do it. You need to have a place where you go and pray. If your house is cluttered and you don't, you know, you don't have a lot of room to, to spread out. And, and, and listen, it doesn't have to be a beautiful place. It doesn't have to be a big and spacious place. But it's wherever you can find. If you don't even have a place in your house, it's at a park or it's in your car. It's at the beach. Wherever it is, you find that place. And you make that your dedicated spot where you speak to the Lord. And that's where when you go, you go to that place and you meet with God. And when you meet with God, and this is something that God is really showing me, don't run in and run out. Okay? You can't have, I can't have a good relationship with my husband if I don't spend time with him. I will never get to know him. There will be no intimacy there. there. There will be no relationship there if I don't get alone with him, if I don't spend time. And that part of a relationship, it takes work. It takes creativity. 
it takes borders and boundaries where sometimes you got to tell everybody, you can wait, but I got to do this. Not worried about your feelings or anything. I, I, I got to do what I got to do to protect what's mine. And we've got to do that with the Lord. You know, sometimes we, we misplace our priorities and we get so worried about people and our relationships with people that we forget that if my relationship with God is right and everything with him is in alignment, everything else is going to trickle down and flow. God has got to be first. So you go find that place wherever it is. And you meet with God every day. Schedule that appointment with him. And when you go into your closet, don't just pray, wait a minute, and then get out. Learn how to bask in his presence. And if you can't really start there, everybody today has got some kind of phone or an iPod or something that you could put earplugs in. You know, if you can't find that time alone with God, then when you go to sleep at night, put that worship music in. Put that soft, sweet worship music in. And just let the praises go up. And turn your brain off. Turn your brain off. You ever have somebody who tries so hard to get on your good side? <laughs> okay, we're going we're to talk about this in later weeks, I could tell. But, you, you know, they... They got to compliment you all the time. They got to grease you. They got to, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Your relationship with God shouldn't be like that. Because you don't have to grease God. You don't have to suck up to God. You just have to come to God. And just come to him as you are because God, for lack of a better word, he is dying to spend time with you. He is, he, he, he longs for it. He, he longs to spend time. If you're worried about nobody wants to be with me, nobody wants to listen to me, and I don't have any friends, listen, you have a friend who sticks closer than a brother, and I can guarantee you that being in his presence is going to do so much more for you than being in anybody else's presence. Because I don't know about you, but tonight being in the presence of God like that, that was surgery. That was surgery. That was enough gas and fuel and a touch from God that that's going to keep me going. But it's just a taste. Because now being in that presence, I want to go home and I want to go right back there. And that's the wonderful thing about God. You don't have to wait till the saints get all together. God wants you. He wants that time alone with you. Because you're important to God. And sometimes, you know, we make, we make places and we make openings for people because we want them to feel like they're important. And they need to feel important. God needs to be important in your life. God needs to be a priority in your life. God is not needy. God is God and all by himself. But God is crazy about you. And he loves you. Just the way you are. And he wants to heal you. He wants to touch you. He wants to manifest himself to you. But God is calling us in this time and in this place, draw close to me, and I'll draw close to you. And that was the word of the Lord. Amen? Amen. 
Okay, we're going to get ready to take our offering. Kathy's going to be by. This offering is split between a little bit of Heaven Ministries and Karen Orlando Ministries so that we can keep going and growing. Um, Tuesday night, we will be back here at 7 o'clock, and I will be continuing um, teaching on Jezebel. Have you enjoyed this soul ties and spiritual warfare teaching? Um, it has really, I think, opened the eyes to many people. Um, and so we're just going to continue on that on Tuesday. Um, but this, this was a message that I believe that God had for those who came tonight. And I think it was really a word in, in due season. So just rest in him. Rest in him. Uh, we're having our one-day women's um, conference um, November Saturday, November 7th. Patty is extremely excited to come. Um, it's going to be the Hilton Garden Inn, November 7th. Uh, tickets are $50, and it is well worth the money. It is from 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock. It includes two worship services, all the gifts and goodies and everything. You walk out with your arms full, um, your arms full, your spirit full, your, your belly full. Um, and it sounds like it's, you know, it's, it's a long ways away. It is not a long ways away. It's like five weeks away. Um, I'm, I'm asking, um, really this year, my, my heart is that I just really kind of want to blow the roof off the place with both the retreat and the women's conference. So, um, those of you that are coming, thank you very much for signing up, but please talk it up as I share it on Facebook. If you would continue to share that flyer and put it out there that we can get as many women to be blessed. You know, how many have been blessed by coming years before? Okay. So don't be a hoarder of a blessing. Okay. There's enough of God. There's enough of God um, to go around. So talk to people. And listen, it, it's a good day to bring unsaved people. You know? Um, don't, don't be, oh, I don't know, she's a little wild for them. Listen, God will move the way, the way, he, needs, the way he needs to be moved, um, the way people need to be moved. So, um, you know, please talk that up. Also, our, um, our retreat is April 8th, 9th, and 10th. Um, it will not um, conflict. I was going to say coincide, but it, it, it will not conflict. That's the right word. Thank you. It will not conflict with uh, Samantha's anniversary. So, um, and thank God for Samantha that we work together and so that we could be blessed on both sides. So that's 8th, 9th, and 10th of April 2016, which again uh, feels like it's next year and it's so far off, but it's really not. Um, we need to purchase those tickets to Samson um, and get that down payment done so that we can purchase those tickets so that we can sit in the uh, auditorium all together. It's it's just it's an awesome, awesome, life-changing weekend. I've never had anybody walk out of a conference or a retreat and went, eh, it was all right. Um, I don't do anything, eh. You know, I promise you that we're not in army barracks, um, no camping, um, Patty and I are in absolute agreement when it comes to that. It is a beautiful five-star hotel that, and food is delicious. And it's just, it's just a wonderful weekend for ladies to get recharged, to get renewed, to get revived. We laugh, we cry. Um, it is just, it's, it's, it's an amazing weekend. I wish I could go on it myself that I didn't have to work is for, for Janine and I, it's a little bit different. Um, but again, I want to encourage you, get as many people as you can because everybody tries to get in in the last minute and when we have those deadlines, we have to cut it off and we can't. So make it a priority. Make yourself a priority. Always worrying about investing in this and that. Learn how to invest in yourself, into your spirit because you can't keep giving out if you don't put back in. Amen? Amen. Okay, let's pray. Father God, I thank you for tonight. Lord God, I lift up every prayer request to you, Father God. Uh, Lord, I just ask you, Father God, that you would just grant every request, Lord God, and we thank you in advance for every healing, every deliverance, every salvation, every uh, provision, Father God. We thank you, God, that it will become a praise report, God, as we give you thanks for the praise reports that are in here. And God, we thank you, Lord, for, for the gifts, Lord God, that people gave tonight. We ask you, God, that you would bless the giver, give it back to them, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, God. Lord, that you would just uh, make this multiply like you did the fish and the loaves, God. Father, we thank you that when we obey your word, that you rebuke the devour for our sake. 
God, we also lift up those, Lord God, that are struggling financially. Father God, that you would make a way where there is no way for them, Father God. Lord, that you would stir up the gifts that are within them, Father God. Bring divine opportunities, God, so that they would be blessed, so that they can be a blessing, Father God. We just praise you and we thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we thank Pastor Karen? That's great. I don't need my glasses right now. I <laughs> uh, just want to share with you, um, we will be closed tomorrow night. That's going to feel very unusual to me. Uh, our Torah uh, study has now ended after seven and a half years, and there will be a new men's fellowship beginning, and the first one will be on Monday, October 19th. So uh, we will get a flyer out about that, and um, and then if the men decide they want, we're going to, I believe, do this once a month, and if the men feel that they would like to meet more often, they will do that. There's also... I